Kia ora. Nami hi nui kia koutou. Koutou mai ki tenei hui mariko. Ko veri koutsa ho ko te kairahi o te patea whaifakaro. Nā reira, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou, tēnā tātou koutou. Tihe Māori ora. So a warm welcome to you all. I'm Barry Coates. I'm the CEO of a charity called Mindful Money. Uh, and we run these online seminars to engage and educate uh, uh, members of the public uh, and to help them invest ethically and with positive impact. Uh, the seminars are held on Wednesdays at 12.15, so uh, please check out our website for future uh, uh, future seminars or get our mailing list, which has details of them. Uh, and you can, uh, at any stage, watch videos or listen to podcasts of the previous seminars, of which there are about 60 now, uh, and they're available on our website, on YouTube, uh, and other websites and podcasts. So today, it's my great pleasure to uh, talk about um, the uh, winners of impact-oriented awards at the recent Mindful Money uh, Ethical and, Inve <laughs> and Impact Investing Awards. So we do these annual awards, and they were started as a way to encourage the raising of standards for ethical and impact investing, but also to celebrate those who are doing fantastic things uh, and that can serve as a kind of shining example for, for others. Um, in judging the impact awards, it's probably worthwhile just saying what the criteria were. We asked about the aims of the fund, how it's going to achieve change, what are the likely impacts and co-benefits, how do you measure these? We asked about the contribution of the fund to starting up and scaling up the enterprises that they invest in. Uh, we asked for examples of the enterprise they invest in, and uh, we asked for evidence that uh, the fund was walking the talk in terms of a commitment to impact investing and sustainable practices. So then the award entries were judged by a, uh, panels of 28 experienced and independent judges. Uh, Mindful Money wasn't involved in the judging. And in this third year, these awards have gained, uh, I think, really good credibility for the seriousness and rigour of that judging process, you know, as opposed to other kind of awards. This is not a, a sort of a pay-for-play kind of uh, process. These are credible and real awards that uh, have become this recognised standard for ethical investing in New Zealand. So... Uh, the implication is that the winners that we're talking to shortly are those who really do stand out in terms of their approach and their practices. Uh, before we start, I should say to you that we're going to be talking about some specific funds during the seminar, but the seminar is about investment strategies, it's about impact investing, it's about what's good, um, it's not about financial advice for any individual, and it's not a recommendation to invest in any particular fund. So with that caveat, uh, let's get on with the seminar. Um, first of all, I'd like to introduce uh, Rowan McMahon. Uh, tēnā koe, Rowan. Tēnā koe, Barry, and uh, thanks very much for the opportunity to talk with you all today. Um, so Rowan's founder and partner in Climate Venture Capital Fund. It's a, a New Zealand and Australian venture capital fund investing in early stage companies to accelerate their journey to zero emissions. So let's celebrate our journey uh, as a country uh, to zero emissions. Uh, Rowan has previously been strategy director at Crown Fiber Holdings, uh, general manager at Telstra, a CEO of startups and a business strategy consultant. So, um, Rowan, let's kick off and uh, maybe if you can lead us through the background uh, to you deciding uh, with others to to start uh, the Climate Venture Capital Fund. 
Absolutely, Barry. Um, well, thank you very much, and um, kia ora tato. It's, uh, it, it's a great honour to be involved with the Climate Venture Capital Fund. We, um, we started really, I guess the exercise was born out, out of frustration. We, we felt that um, everybody could see that um, the, the climate crisis was upon us, uh, and a lot of people, um, certainly those with um, interest in technology, interest in investment, could see that uh, there was going to need to be uh, capital funding put towards decarbonisation a range across a range of products and services, essentially across every industry. Um, and we felt that there was a big gap around how the heck we were going to do that. Um, and on the one hand, there were venture capital funds which invest in technologies, but they weren't climate specific. On the other hand, there were uh, there were good impact funds out there um, that were uh, le leaning into the, the, the climate aspect. Um, it, it's funny to, to recognise that since we started the Climate VC Fund about three years ago, um, there's been a clutch of, of, of these sorts of funds start up around the world. Um, you know, which are really starting to really um, bear out the investment premise that we're on about, which is that we need to invest in decarbonisation, that there are technologies that can help. They're not magic solutions, but they, uh, they are getting going and they are helping um, those big corporate emitters to have more options to, you know, to not just sign up to climate pledges, but to actually provably reduce their emissions. Yeah. And can you talk to us about the process of, of setting it up? It was uh, kind of a little it's always a bit of a slog for a new fund to to get capital investments in yeah. and uh, yeah i know you've 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 worked hard at uh, at at properly capitalizing the fund yeah that's right so i mean we um we are the little sister fund of punakaki fund which has been going for about nine years now so we've had the um benefit of having their skills and um, their knowledge and professionalism. Um, also their compliance smarts, which is um, which is non-trivial. We're regulated as a wholesale fund, so we'll have to ask a whole series of questions to make sure that each of our investors is wholesale qualified. Um, and we, you know, obviously we need to have the right standards of, um, of um, com compliance to, to what, everything that we do. Um, we uh, really throughout the fundraising process reached out to as many people as we thought would, would have some degree of um, resonance with this sort of topic. Um, and that ranges from individual investors who are, you know, more or less mums and dads, not real, not necessarily um, true high net worth individuals uh, through to some wealthier families and family offices, through to some NGOs that have interest in this space, um, philanthropists and the like, and then through to some corporates, uh, either emitters on the one hand or investment funds and uh, KiwiSavers and the like on the other. So we really tried to think about the A to Z. Um, and you know, I certainly firmly believe that climate capital is going to need absolutely everybody on board. Um, in different asset classes in different ways, not forgetting government as well. Um, and, uh, you know, there's going to need to be a, a lot of money put into this whole space in the next little while. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, we can come back to it, but, but that money into climate solutions is not necessarily going to come from the major emitters uh, at the moment. They, uh, they're still very much part of the problem. Um, can you describe, Rowan, the process you go through, you know, when, you, when you're looking at uh, uh, enterprises to invest in, how you screen them, what, what you look for, what's really important, you know, do you have enough uh, uh, investable opportunities out there? Yeah. Can yeah. you give us a snapshot of that? Absolutely. Well, we have loads of investable opportunities, which is fantastic um, and probably mm. it's a bit of a surprise. Um, it's been good to see just how many people are working on the climate crisis um, and some very, very smart people. Our mandate, as you mentioned in your introduction, is Australia and, and New Zealand companies. We also have the Pacific in our mandate as well. So Pacific com companies could be investable for us. Um, mm. it, the first question we ask is obviously around emissions, because that's the whole point. Um, and we're looking for uh, material, provable, measurable emission savings, um, but they're often substitution or avoidance savings. So the company itself that we're funding, as it gets going, will be producing more widgets or more items that it makes in whatever manner. That actually generates emissions typically, but what you're looking is for a, a compensating um, and larger reduction on, on another part of the carbon equation, often because of a competing product will sell fewer of their widgets and they're the more polluting widgets. So in net terms, we have a saving. Um, so we start with that question in mind, and if we're convinced that that answer is compelling, then we can then proceed to look at the, um, you know, more of the, the general kind of commercial due diligence uh, questions. We have a, a standalone um, external impact committee, and we uh, invite them to veto anything that they think has any negative uh, externalities uh, of any material size or scale. 
they also are tasked with telling us whether they think we're um, we're on the on the money with the emissions impact because that is important, um, and we're and they're tasked with helping us on the emissions measurement side, which is uh, still a, a bit of an emerging um, science. Uh, so, um, yeah, we're, we're really looking to start with the climate impact, but then we're starting to very quickly turn that into the question of, is this a good investment? Because uh, we are a for-profit fund trying to make good returns for our investors. Just in case anyone's wondering, and, and the audience, by the way, is very, very welcome to put a question uh, to Rowan or, or our next guest, uh, Bill Murphy, just uh, go to ask a question tab at the bottom of the, uh, the screen. Run uh, uh, just to to clarify, you you're not uh, uh, you're not investing in companies that are reducing their own emissions. You're investing primarily in companies that have technology or approaches which will reduce emissions across a wider a wider set of, of uh, emitters. Is that is that correct? Yeah, that's right. And we um, uh, generally, I mean, I characterize it as local solutions to global problems. Uh, there's typically yeah. similar kinds of emissions categories across different countries. If we can solve an emissions category for a particular product set here in Aotearoa, why wouldn't a customer in another part of the world choose to buy that technology? Um, and that means that we can, you know, kind of use our, cell, our own market here domestically as a bit of a test bed to try to get new solutions going. Yeah. And, and Ron, what if you had to single out one or two things you you're most proud of uh, so far in your in your journey uh, with Climate Venture Capital Fund, maybe in addition to the Mindful Money Award, of course, uh, what what uh, what what might those be? Well, I, I think um, you know the, the 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 fact that we're now able to draw a linkage, at least you know through through uh, my fund. You know, we're not the only ones, and I'm sure Bill will talk about his in a moment. But we are drawing a tangible linkage between what you're investing in and emissions reduction. And I think a lot of people are kind of a bit baffled and bamboozled by climate because they see it as something that's happening to them and they don't see that there's much that they can do. And if they feel that there is something they can do, it's often, you know, recycle a bit better, which is sort of nice, but is, is probably not really going to move the needle very much. Um, so I just want to give you one really quick example. We've invested in a company called Cleanery which makes these lovely little sachets that you can see here. Uh, this one's for your bathroom cleaner. This one's a hand wash one. Um, there's about uh, a dozen of these sort of um, stock keeping units, as they call them, or products, as most people would know them. Um, and so for something as prosaic as washing your hands or cleaning your bathroom, um, you can reduce emissions from doing that activity by buying that sachet instead of what you would usually be buying, which is probably a plastic bottle, which is mostly filled with water, which is brought to the supermarket in a fossil fuel filled truck. Um, and so uh, we've invested in that company. And so if you're one of our investors, firstly, thank you. Secondly, um, we've used your money to put into that company to help them scale up. They're based here in Tamaki and um, they can make 20,000 sachets a day of their product. It produces um, way less plastic waste than the alternative um, way that most of us are using to, to clean our, to wash our hands and to clean our bathrooms. Um, and a very, very practical thing, just trying to decarbonize that part of the, the supermarket aisle. Um, and while the sachets are made of plastic at the moment, um, you know, it is recyclable LDPE category four plastic. Um, we are working on a way to remove even that plastic from it, in which case it would be a fully circular product, which would be truly awesome. Good, good example. Thanks very much, Ron. We'll we'll come back to you in a second, and in the meantime, we'll introduce our second guest. A very warm welcome to uh, Bill Murphy from Purpose Capital. Welcome, Bill. Thank you. Bill, can you give us the starting point uh, as we did with with Ron? Why did you start Purpose Capital? What are what are the aims? What inspired you to to do this? And and how do you see Thing and impact. Sure. Well, uh, the main reason I started um, Purpose Capital was I felt that we really needed to be doing impact investing in New Zealand, and I and I was pretty astounded that we weren't you know, back five six years ago when I really started thinking about this at the time. Um, so that was the that was the initial impetus was. Um, we need to be doing this kind of investing, and um, and I I guess I love a challenge, and I love making a difference, and it just seemed that I could use my experience, connections, contacts um, from years of doing direct investing to establish a growth stage um, impact investment fund. 
Yes. And and the, how you achieve change? How how uh, how Purpose Capital is able to to uh, create that that impact? Obviously, it's not uh, not just money. I'm sorry, uh, Barry. Uh, did yeah, how Bill? How you're able to achieve impact? Uh, uh, what what uh, what Purpose Capital does in order to to uh, uh, to find and nurture impact companies? Right. So um, because I've been involved in direct investing for so many years, um, uh, we're fortunate in that a lot of deals, a lot of investment opportunities just just come to us. Um, we do have a, a network of, of, uh, of contacts that we keep in touch with um, regarding, uh, regarding investment opportunities that they may be seeing. Um, uh, and to date, you know, to give listeners a, a feel for how active this space is, um, we've had well over 450 um, investment opportunities approach us. Um, the vast majority of those are too early for purpose capital. As I mentioned, we're a growth stage fund. Um, we're very, very much wanting to encourage um, uh, impact investment at an earlier stage in New Zealand, and there are some uh, some funds and initiatives doing that. Um, but yeah, we're we're focused at growth stage, and um, uh, yeah, and as I say, out of that four four hundred fifty, we've invested in four. So I don't want anyone to lose heart. Um, but uh, yeah, it's a it's a narrow it's a narrow walk uh, doing both impact and financial return. Yeah, and and for probably for the understanding of, of most people, the the fact that you're more on the growth space than the the startup space means that generally the risks are a bit lower because the companies have already got a bit of a track record, and you're helping to take them to the next stage. Is that right? That's right. And you know, so why why did I do why did I set purpose capital at that stage, particularly given the fact that I was one of the people that helped to establish early stage investing in New Zealand uh, through Enterprise Angels. Um, I It's really about trying to scale impact as quickly as possible. I knew coming to market that if I was coming with a brand new fund that was an impact fund, that was investing in the riskiest type of investments, which is early stage invest, early stage businesses and projects. I knew I wouldn't be able to raise very much capital at all. So I uh, wanted to give everyone a bit more confidence, reduce the risk, uh, hence uh, growth stage. And yeah, as you say, Barry, what does growth stage mean? It means a, a business is established, uh, it knows its customers, it knows its products, and it's using our money to really scale its impact. And so just, just to, to finish off, is there a particular uh, uh, investment that Purpose Capital has made, a particular company that you want to highlight that you've given us a little snapshot of? Sure. This is where I have to control myself because I'd like to talk about them all. But let's let's go to the okay. first investment we made, which is um, Fakatoya Muscles. Um, it's it's been a it's been a, it hasn't been an easy journey uh, between uh, the challenges of the weather for a primary industry uh, organ company like Fakatoya, which has uh, deep water aquaculture uh, farms, uh, but we've built a manufacturing a muscle manufacturing uh, factory uh, in Apodiki, New Zealand's second most deprived town by some measures, and we've employed two hundred thirty seven people there. You know that's. We're very, we're very proud of that, um, and the difference that that's going to make in Apodiki, uh, not only immediately, but uh, we hope, um, you know, for generations to come. Okay, great example. Thanks very much, Bill. We'll uh, we'll invite Rowan back in and uh, have a discussion as a panel. So thanks. Great, thank you, um, Rowan. You know, here's a this kind of difficult time. So, uh, you know, you've got lots of financial volatility. People are worried about investment returns. People are worried about uh, um, sort of greenwash for anything that purports to be doing kind of climate benefit. What what kind of headwinds 
are you seeing and and how how how's that uh, uh, what difference does that make to climate venture capital fund well um bill we're in, we're in, uh, Barry we're investing the the sum that we've uh, got available to deploy and as I say we've got lots of companies that is very exciting so we're, we're very happy with the day job if you like um, the issue is that there's there's not enough capital uh, in this space and you know while I hope that we're um, doing as as bill is um, a purpose capital you know trying to catalyze more capital into that space the reality is climate finance is in shortfall around the world in both the public markets the, the listed markets and in the private markets and from a government perspective and, and there's any number of data sets that will show you that um, I guess the the biggest challenge is that we're, we're just really really short of time and uh, you know before we jumped onto the call I was remarking on the fact that the coal fi uh, trees are flowering here despite the fact that it's July you know the um, nature thinks it's spring in Aotearoa right now um, and we're heading into El Nino uh, so there is the climate disruptions are upon us and uh, we we are not responding as, as quickly as we probably need to and I do believe that part of that is is capital related it doesn't affect me that much in the sense that we're deploying our, the, our fund and, and happy with our progress but I would like to be doing what we're doing at bigger scale and I know that there are opportunities to do so yeah uh, obviously the government's got a got a role through their their green investment finance facility are there any opportunities for you to work with them or other capital providers? I know you're talking to some of the mainstream funds about contributing uh, their capital into Climate Venture Capital Fund and, and co-funding with you. Is that, uh, are you seeing the mainstream funds kind of, uh, government and mainstream funds moving in your direction? There's definitely interest in that. Um, Co-investment is the key to making venture capital work better for institutional investors because you know we're a relatively small and special asset class with relatively high fees uh, which are needed in order to do, to do great due diligence because that's what the job is um, but in order to bring in larger investors they will typically look to co-invest alongside you and uh, and therefore the the high fee and a small part of their investment becomes a, a lower fee overall and they can um, deploy more of their capital into this space that's some um, what those are the conversations we've had with a number of parties so far um, and we're already working with uh, green investment finance to, I think they're doing they're doing some good work there in both equity and debt and they're catalyzing some some really interesting uh, ventures um, we've uh, we're, we're happy to do due diligence jointly with parties like that and we're already investing alongside them in some cases um, so there's quite a good of quite a lot of collaboration happening in the in the system which is healthy um, I just go back to that earlier observation that you know in totality it feels like we're not doing enough and what we are doing probably should we should try to go faster yeah I think most people who have been uh, um, hit by floods and uh, and heavy precipitation and in, in, in Aotearoa recently have kind of suddenly woken up to the fact that climate change is not only something that happens somewhere else at some stage in the future we are well down the road to uh, having these impacts affect our lives pretty deeply and uh, as you well know there's kind of much more of it uh, yet Absolutely. to come mm. yeah bill welcome back are you uh, um <laughs> so sorry to have uh, had these sound problems are you all okay now i hope so how's that yep better sounds okay. good okay bill, same same question to to you are you seeing interest from the mainstream funds in investing in impact through purpose capital uh, or co-funding with you into into companies um, they're going to have to. Um, Barry, as you well know, and everybody who's familiar with Mind for Money knows that um, people are more and more becoming aware of the fact that um, ESG, sustainability, um, aren't really delivering the kinds of difference that uh, investors want to see. Um, they want to see a portion of their wealth be used to make the world a better place for their children and grandchildren. And the institutional investors are really struggling to find products um, that can deliver on that. And impact investing, um, given that it's direct investing into uh, companies and projects that, that drive impact, you can't get more close to and, you, and, and see your money more directly involved in creating the change that you want to see change than 
impact investing. So I think uh, KiwiSaver clients and others are going to force the issue onto the institutional investors. And, um, you know, as Rowan said, it's, um, it used to happen yesterday. So it's, um, yeah, I'm, I'm, we're confident it will happen. Yeah, I mean, Rowan kind of put his finger on it, uh, didn't he, Bill, when he said, you know, part of the, the, the difficulty is where there's an obsession with fees people lose sight of, of actually what you need in, in order to invest in climate action, in impact enterprises. Actually, you do, you do need to kind of manage it. You need to nurture companies. You need to contribute to them, to grow them. All of that doesn't come for free. And so there are fees. Uh, and so maybe people should be thinking less about the lowest fees and a bit more about, uh, about what uh, what the impact of their money does is that yeah. is that something that that you see a lot of the obsession with with how low can the fees go? Um, let's see, some, yep, certainly some, and some of it is unexpressed. You know, they, they they don't actually say it to you. I think it's part of the sophistication that we are developing in the impact investing world is showing that not only at the fund level, but also at the staff level, that we also are also walking the impact walk. We invest into the fund, um, the, 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 the manager's staff, of course, we, we invest into the fund itself. But there, is other, there are other ways in which we can show that we fully believe in this way of making money work. So for instance, in our second fund, we will have traditional uh, a traditional profit share um, if the fund does well financially and also impact is those two hurdles that the fund has to pass but we'll, we'll have a significant allocation of that to supporting the, the impact ecosystem and at a staff level we'll show those institutional investors the market rate for people running private equity funds in new zealand is the salary rate is x and we're not going to be that. We're not looking to develop um, a, a manager and a, and a private equity fund that um, has the characteristics of our commercial cousins. Um, uh, so I think that's important as well. And I think um, that's something that we need to work through practically because you still have to employ staff. You still have to, you still have to do all those things you mentioned, Barry. Yeah. And and for you, Ron, I know you're you're like like Bill, you're you're uh, aiming to produce financial returns uh, uh, um, that have a kind of a high target after the payment of fees. So I guess what you want to see is people focus a little bit more on impact and returns after fees, not necessarily just fees. Yeah, and I think um, you know people are, have every right to look for good returns on their money, right? It's their money, so why not um, why not offer them the best that you possibly can? What we would say is that sometimes people see um, impact investment and good returns as being in in um, in some kind of uh, competition with one another. I see that they're absolutely correlated with one another. Um, we're investing in inherently better products and services uh, if they're any good then they'll find customers and they'll make money and therefore those who invest in them will make money so we certainly see that that's that's kind of our investment thesis um, and you know in terms of the uh, the fee structure you know it, it's actually very normal for this sector um, this is how it's done uh, the manager uh, takes a, a cut of, of any um, benefits above a certain um, threshold level which is entirely normal and appropriate. Um, what I think is happening, though, is that the, the sector itself is still relatively new in Aotearoa, so um, it's not as large as it might be. And as I say, and I'm sure Bill has the same has the same problem, we have a lot of people approaching us uh, who are looking to do really interesting work. And in our in our case, it's in, in the climate space specifically, you know, there's, um, there's a lot of people out there with bright ideas working on commercialization. And this is this is a very new, this is a very Kiwi problem. And I say that as an Australian, um, but you know, Australia actually has a very similar problem where there's great innovation, but then commercializing the innovation and then taking it to market has been a, has been a struggle for a long time. And to some extent, this is just the 2023 version of that struggle. It's just that in the climate space specifically, you know, it's obviously a very urgent challenge. Yeah. 
So let's turn to to uh, what what's coming up in the future. And and Bill, you've alluded to the fact that that you're looking for a, to establish a follow on fund. And and can you give us some idea of of what's exciting you about about uh, uh, the next stage for 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 you and Purpose Capital? Sure. One is building out um, a bigger team, <laughs> and also my eventual succession plan. <laughs> um, so that, that's, that's, that's exciting. Um, I think what's most exciting is when you, when you make these impact investments, um, you know, I will run through all of them. I'm sure growing, you know, I know they, they have the same excitement that I do. Employing 237 people in New Zealand's second most deprived town, um, being a key investor in and driving um, the establishment of um, made solar farms throughout New Zealand, enough to power the city the size of Hamilton. Um, it's when you can make, when you when you're investing for making that kind of change, and that difference. That's really that's really what drives. So the key thing with the next fund is, is we want to play our part on behalf of the work of Rowan and and he's doing, and also the other impact investors that we need to come into the market. Um, we're going to have a real go at getting institutional investment into, the, into our second fund. Every, all of us to this point have not been able to do that. Um, so yeah, that's, that's a key goal of the second fund. But the main one is just doing more and more of that, um, making a difference. And and same same for you, Ron. What, what's uh, what's on the cards for for uh, your thinking about where to next? Yeah, well, we're obviously thinking about expanding uh, what we're doing. We do see that there is more climate capital coming into the market. We'd like to be part of that process. We think that um, there's clearly, on the one hand, demand from early stage companies for more money, um, and they're clearly not getting uh, enough of that from more traditional funding sources. Um, they're not going to find it at their local bank, for example. Um, and so they, they do need people who are going to lean into what they're doing and understand it better, which is a classic kind of venture capital type of opportunity. Um, so demand for capital on the one hand on the on the other hand there is uh, demand for emissions reduction from big emitters um, and I, I certainly believe from uh, from large funds uh, larger institutional funds that are looking to um, to understand climate to lean into the response and to be part of you know contributing to some solutions my I guess part of my investment thesis for those sorts of parties is to understand that you know, each time we open the newspaper these days, there's more downside risk that you're seeing as we understand the gravity of the climate crisis. Um, you don't have a heck of a lot of upside in your portfolio unless you're investing in things that are actually on the right side of the fence. Um, and you may find that, uh, you know, climate risk hasn't been fully understood, hasn't fully been priced in. As you start to understand that better, you're going to need to do more on the leaning into the positive solutions. That's my, that's my thinking. So for a lot of people, they may have part of their uh, their investment funds in a mainstream, relatively safe uh, area, but then they might have a portion of their funds which are uh, for impact, for things that they really care about and things that can make a positive difference. But for, for both of you, uh, it's that's you're only at the moment uh, accessible for wholesale and professional investors that meet the criteria under the law for wholesale and professional investors. Any any thoughts about uh, opening up to retail investors so so that the pool of potential investors can be a bit wider? Um, Bill, maybe maybe you first. Yeah. So after all my years of early stage investing. Um, which is also just wholesale. Um, I think the time I used to be very critical of um, equity crowdfunding and opening up those types of investment opportunities to the general public, because those are the riskiest uh, investment opportunities. And I, I felt that I just didn't feel comfortable that, that um, general members of the public, let's say mom and pop investors, which I don't mean to denigrate um, anybody's knowledge about financial things, but I, you're asking people to invest in something that takes a fair degree of sophistication to understand. So I was always fairly critical of it. I think 
the times now are, are such that we we have a we miss a real opportunity if we don't allow members of the public to put some wealth into into this space. Um, we don't have any plans within our funds to be able to open it up to retail investors. That's a, a very big undertaking to be able to do that. Um, but I, I, I hope on this well. Yep. Ron, how about your own plans for retail offering? So our, our sister fund, uh, the Pernikaki Fund, has done uh, retail offers every year. Um, and they've also done equity crowdfunding through um, a snowball effect and people like that. So the, the platforms are there that you can do that. But as Bill said, the, um, the kind of compliance burden of signing out a, a product disclosure statement is uh, for that for that is significant. Um, yeah. We're we're looking at it. Um, I think it's it's difficult to do. Um, but what disappoints me is that unfortunately we've had to turn away a lot of investment interest from smaller investors who are not capable of meeting the wholesale threshold. So there is a gap there um, where people are walking in the door saying, you know, we want to invest in climate response, and um, they don't currently have a product that um, that, is, that is meeting those needs. Yeah, one uh, one of the ways of dealing with that, Barry, as you know, would be if we could get institutional investors particularly Kiwi, Kiwi Saver funds to um, have an allocation into our area, then those retail investors there will know that some of their money is going into it. And that's the opportunity for them, for, the, for those yeah. institutional and, investors. Agree. Yeah, exactly, Bill. And and that's something that we're, we're very keen to push as mindful money to try and work with these fund managers to, to get them to allocate uh, some portion of their fund into ventures that can have a positive impact uh, and hopefully build a stronger, deeper capital base for, for good ventures like, like yours. Uh, but also, in, and uh, perhaps I should have said at the beginning of the seminar, uh, I'm actually a kind of wholesale investor myself because I have professional qualifications and, and uh, um, it's my uh, uh, Pleasure to be an investor in, in both of your funds, and uh, uh, so uh, I would suspect that actually there are probably more people who are wholesale and professional investors in New Zealand than realise they are. Yeah. So I'd encourage people to to think about uh, about that, and you may have uh, more opportunities for investment than than you think. Uh, Mindful Money's website, by the way, has a directory on impact investing featuring both of your funds uh, and some others uh, at both the wholesale and, and retail side. So, so uh, there is a, a particular importance around your funds and other unlisted funds insofar as you tend to do more to contribute uh, to creating impact than just investing in a listed company. Can we can we just um, we, we haven't got long to go, uh, but Bill, could you give us some idea of, of how you and Purpose Capital are able to to kind of contribute to the success of the companies that you invest in? What do you do in order to to kind of really help create that leverage so that you're adding more than money? The name of the game, <laughs> one of the names of the game, and the kind of investing that we do. So we're not an early stage investor. We're a, a growth stage investor. Companies have to be established and they need our funding to help them scale them in what they're doing. So we're a bit different than climate venture fund in that way. Um, but the name of the game is, is post-investment management. It's um, first of all, establishing um, an agreement around what the business is going to do of its financial and commercial performance, but also what it's going to do and what it's going to measure in terms of impact uh, so that we can have that reporting coming back from both of those, both of those aspects. Um, then, it, then it's a matter of just the hard work of working alongside a company to um, help it to achieve uh, everything that it can achieve, both in, from an impact perspective and, and, and also from a financial perspective. Rowan, you're back. And it looks like we may have lost Barry. Everybody's still online listening. Then we can continue to chat, Rowan. Yeah, that would be good. <laughs> One of the 
big challenges that we have being that we're um, the next sort of the next stage after you guys here, you know, we're, we're, yeah. we're trying to focus on growth stage mm -hmm. is the quality and quantity of deal flow at that stage. Mm. Uh, you, I, I agree with you that um, we've seen probably 450, 500 opportunities in the three and a half years that we've been going. The vast majority of those are too early for us. Mm -hmm. um, and so I'm sure that you're seeing a similar, similar deal flow. It's so important that we have impact investors um, at that early stage as well, because it's the things that you invest in and with the post investment management that you guys will take on uh, that give those companies a real chance to get to the stage where we can invest in them. Yeah, and I really hope that having a climate overlay specifically to what we do um, means that we're going to ask the right questions about, yeah. you know, in that DD process, the due diligence process. It's um, um, climate is not always particularly straightforward. Um, you know, there can be regulatory and policy sort of winkles to, to um, how it's going to pan out. Um, so, you know, there are a zillion good ideas out there, um, but there are not a zillion good companies. Yeah. Um, and, you know, you've got to kind of parse them correctly. And, you know, as you say, hopefully we'll we'll grow them to a certain level and hand them over to, to you to sort of take them to the next level or or peer funds that um, can help to do that. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> and I think um, to me, the, the, the key to the climate crisis is that every investor should be thinking about it um, and different investors have their own mandates and their own, um, you know, prerogatives and port and in their portfolio. Um, but no one can ignore that this is happening. Um, no yeah. one has any excuse for saying, you know, no one told me. Um, anybody who's, uh, who's um, you know, even turned on the television um, cannot miss the fact that this is happening. And it's, to me, it's interesting this year that there's been a bit of a change of tone from some people I've talked to. I'm mm. not sure if you're seeing that too, but mm. I think definitely what's been happening out, outside people's windows has, has not gone without notice. Yeah, and while because I was concerned about deal flow as one uh, one part of it, we're, we're a, a broader fund um, than than uh, than you guys. Um, I would say that our primary interest is climate. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is yeah. Um, refrigeration, um, car sharing, solar farms, deep water agriculture, um, just about every investment. 15 minute city townhouse development. Just about every investment is, it's our primary focus is, is the climate aspect. Mm, 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 mm. Yeah, that's awesome. And um, there are a lot of people doing this now, which is really good. Not not so many in New Zealand, but there's a lot of people doing this around the world, so. Oh yeah, very, uh, yeah, very slow here. Mm. Um, but I think part in the early stage space, it started off, early stage investing started off very, very slowly and then and then really started to build momentum. And we now have a world-class system for early stage investing. Um, and, I'm, and I'm sure that will happen uh, in impact. Um, if we don't run out of time and have to put all of our money into adaptation rather than mitigation. Mm. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, for that reason, we're pretty, we're pretty keen to stay with emissions reduction. We think adaptation right. would be you know, it's interesting stuff and maybe we're going to need it, but I'm just hoping to be laser focused on job one. I'm really if happy to hear that. If you do job one, then I think, you know, that then maybe job two is not as big of a problem. Yeah. Also because adaptation will be the easier thing to invest in. Uh, and it's going to be where a lot of political momentum will go to because people will be, you know, saying, what are you going to do about my seawall? What are you going to do about whatever? So yeah, I think the more important work is still the mitigation work. I, that's I'm really pleased to hear that. Mm -hmm. We uh, we don't seem to be getting Barry back, so right. Uh, that's that's about time. So I think we'll kind of wrap that up. If you thank you both very much, uh, it's been great to hear from you. Uh, do you have any closing remarks you'd both like to make? Um, if you want to start with you, Bill, or. Uh, I just echo what Rowan says. You know, as as we've described. Our primary focus now is climate. Um, and those of us who have been fortunate and have built up some wealth during our lives, um, now is the time to use that wealth. Um, so yeah, that's my final comment. Mm. Yeah, I'd certainly echo that. And I'd just like to um, really thank Mindful Money. Uh, we're very um, grateful for the work that um, 
you, you, Andy, and the team um, and Barry uh, are doing. I think it's really shining a light on where people's money is actually going, and um, in some cases, that's not been particularly transparent. Um, and you know, as um, you know, I have Kiwi Saver funds too. I'm sure most of us do, and and the like. Um, you know, very keen to make sure that they're used purposefully and um, that they're not um, making making nasty societal problems worse just by just because we didn't know about it. Yep. No, I agree entirely. Thanks so much to, to Rowan and, and Bill and to, uh, to my colleague Andrew who stepped in. I'm sorry about the technical snafu. Um, but it's been a really interesting seminar. So, so thank you to, to, uh, these great entrepreneurs that are, that are doing really good work in the climate and impact space. Um, the series of seminars wouldn't be possible without, uh, generous, uh, sponsorship. So, so, uh, a big thank you to, to our sponsors. Uh, that's, uh, um, Alfinity. Uh, so thanks very much to them. Uh, they're, uh, uh, from Australia and, and, uh, but active, uh, in New Zealand. Uh, so thanks very much to Medical Assurance Society, otherwise known as MAP, uh, to MRSA. Uh, to the New Zealand Green Investment Finance. Uh, thanks also to sponsorship from Captain Trip, uh, Booster Asset Management, Harbour Asset Management, and these executives. And finally, thanks also to contributions, uh, from Pathfinder Asset Management and iFund. Um, so that's all from us. Um, see you in, in, uh, two weeks time. Uh, we've got a great uh, seminar there. Uh, that talks about guidance on investing ethically. So, so very much kind of back to basics, back to basics. You know, if you're interested in ethical investment, but you're not sure about how to do it, why to do it, what some of the pitfalls are, what some of the opportunities are, then come along to the seminar on Wednesday, 26th at 12.15 uh, as usual. In the meantime, stay active, invest mindfully. Namihi nui kia koutou, mā te wā.